Today's speaker at our experimental math seminar is Professor Volodya Retach, one of the greatest, perhaps the greatest expert in non-commutative Catalan numbers and many, many other non-commutative things. We will talk about non-commutative Catalan numbers. As usual, uh, please mute yourself, but if you have a question, feel free to interrupt Volodya and uh, ask a question and then mute yourself back. Thank you. Okay. All right, so thank you very much, Joran. And uh, so that I, I will basically continue my talk on non commutative Catalan numbers uh, because I will add uh, orthogonality, positivity, and so on. Uh, this is as usual in this area. This is a joint work with uh, Arkady Bernstein from University of Oregon. And basically, I have three goals. And this is considered like generalizations of non commutative Catalan numbers, specialization, deformation, so on. Then I will use those numbers as moments for non commutative orthogonal polynomials. Now, the theory of orthogonal, non commutative orthogonal polynomial originated in our work in 1994 published in 1995. And if I have time, I will establish some what's called non-commutative total positivity of the corresponding Hankel matrices. Hankel matrices will play a central role here. Now, since I have like three goals, I will mimic my talk. On uh, hey, Volodya, excuse me. Can you make it the font bigger? We do control plus to make it a little bit bigger on the screen. Where was started? No, somehow I can. Okay, I don't have. Don't worry about it. It's visible. All right. Okay, I tried. Okay, and so I will mimic my. Uh, then I will mimic my talk on the famous article by Vladimir Lenin: uh, three sources and three co component parts of Marxism. <laughs> and this is because I had to know this uh, article almost by heart when I was a student. Uh, all right. Are, are, you, are you named after Lenin? Uh, I named actually after my uh, grandfather. Uh, and so his and name- Your grandfather was... is named after Lenin, maybe? No, 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 no. <laughs> my, my grandfather had a Jewish name and uh, his name was Wolf. <laughs> but my parents decided that maybe it's not a good idea to have such a name <laughs> in the Soviet Union. So, all right. All right. And so now let me just maybe go and uh, let, there are zillion definitions of uh, Catalan numbers. And, uh, but I will need only three, uh, three of them. Uh, the first one is uh, well known, uh, that's uh, Catalan number. So I will use uh, small letters for classical numbers. And uh, this is just a number of all monotonic lattice paths uh, on the grid from, uh, from, from the zero, zero to NN. And all those paths must lie below the diagonal. Okay, so. And the number is just this Catalan numbers. Now, the next definition is less uh, famous and it's, uh, it's done like this. So you have, you, you consider just the Hankel matrix, uh, just uh, Hankel matrix, uh, just uh, made of uh, Catalan numbers. Uh, you take the determinant and you consider two equations, one then this determinant equals one when you start with C naught and also one when you start with uh, C1. Uh, so you have basically a system of uh, highly nonlinear equations and surprisingly a solutions of this uh, system you have actually in uh, positive integer numbers, which are called uh, Catalan numbers. Okay, now the third definition is maybe even less famous. You consider this matrix that uh, you see, this is like three diagonal or Jacobi matrix. 
and you take its powers and you take the elements which are in this um, in the uh, left upper corner and they, this gives you exactly the corresponding Catalan number. And uh, so the, I believe it comes from papers by Eigner. And actually, this is actually fun when you play with such matrices and consider just uh, these powers and this uh, the corner elements, and you can get uh, a lot of famous uh, numbers from uh, a lot of famous sequences from the Encyclopedia of Integers. You can, for example, have Motzkin numbers and so on. And uh, I will show you just one more. Uh, matrix which gives uh, Catalan numbers. You see that it's it's not the uh, Jacob matrix, but uh, again you have these uh, Catalan numbers, and uh, so many sequences can be done by maybe obtained by using such matrices. Okay, now I will try to give you like three non uh, non commutative versions of all these three constructions. Uh, first, let's talk about- the logia, sorry. In this uh, P, the matrix P prime, it's one, one, zero, zero, then one, 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 zero, 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 then one, 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 four ones, and then five ones. Yeah, so this is what's called the uh, Hessenberg matrix. Ah. So you have just this triangular matrix out of ones. And okay. then yeah. you have, uh, so the next diagonal also consists of ones. So this would be another one in the last row, I guess. And then that, that, that. Yeah, okay, so yeah. sorry, but that's. Uh... Okay, it's clear, thank you. Okay, all right. So now let me recall this non-commutative version of this, of the first definition. Uh, so I am working with a free uh, group which generated by uh, just the infinite number of free variables x0, x1, and so on. Now, uh, when I have point of an integer plane, uh, so that's I associate its content. This is the difference between P1 and P, uh, P2, between two, two coordinates. And if P is the Catalan path or a dig path, then of course P1 is always greater or equal than P2, so the content is uh, positive, uh, non negative. Now, uh, I consider a corner for this path. I will show you a picture on the next slide. And uh, um, so, and um, so, and the, the corners, they have two natures. It's southeast, so you go to the right and up, or it's northwest when you go up and to the right. And then I can consider just to, to this path a product of these variables. C of P is just the number of these three variables. Sigma of P is just one if this is southwest and negative one if P is northwest. And for the all sum, for the all Catalan paths, I consider the sum of these monomials and I call this the Catalan number. So let me just go to, oops. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, that's a wrong file. I, uh, I don't have a picture. Okay, maybe then I'll skip the picture, Doran, because then, um, um, Okay. So I will skip, skip the picture, but uh, because I don't need any pictures anymore. 
And, uh, but then uh, here you have examples of uh, Catal Catalan numbers, non-commutative Catalan numbers that I have. And so this is X naught, X one. Here you have just X two correspond just the path which goes to the, uh, to the right and up. X one is the path that go to the right, up, to the right, up, to, to the right and up. And uh, so on, this is for C3, uh, for C3 you have exactly five turns. And um, the number of turns is exactly the same as the number of paths. Now, if you will uh, set all those axes equals to one, uh, then you will get uh, ordinary Catalan numbers. And as you see, the construction is, uh, is symmetric. And because you can read those uh, expressions from left to right or from right to left, they are the same. So that's surprising. Okay, I, I don't need um, uh, to discuss uh, recurrence relations, but they are also known. But now let me go to the second definition, which use determinants in the commutative case. And uh, uh, maybe it's not surprising for this seminar, I have to use uh, what's called quasi-determinant equations. So let me explain what it is. Uh, so this is my Catalan number, uh, Catalan, sorry, this is Hankel matrix uh, consisting of non-commutative Catalan numbers. Now for non-commutative matrix, it's very, it's not known what is the good definition of determinant depends on your problem, but uh, you can always define what's called quasi-determinant or a sure complement. And it's defined in the following way. Uh, so you may consider the inverse of this matrix and they to take inverses to elements of this inverse uh, matrix. For example, I need only this, uh, the, the element that stays here. And so this is just, so, so then it will be the southeast uh, element of the inverse matrix. But uh, to compute, it's not good for computation. To compute this, I use another formula and uh, which is written here. I take this element and then I take um, the last row except this element. Then I take this matrix, the smaller matrix and take the inverse. And then I multiply by the right column up to this uh, element. Now, uh, and uh, I understand that this is ugly uh, definition. But surprisingly, it, it, it worked in many problems. And so the technique was actually developed by Gelfand and Mead and there are a series of papers. Now in the commutative case, uh, so this quasi-determinus is just the ratio of two determinants. So in the Catalan case, it's equals one. Now, what happens if I, instead of one, I will put just this, uh, one of these free variables. So the formula is here. And I have a system of uh, rational equations. So this is not just, uh, just nonlinear, but rational equations. And surprisingly, the solutions of this uh, systems are uh, what's called Laurent polynomials. So they are exactly my, this non-commutative Catalan numbers. And as you see, uh, there are always just, uh, all these powers are alternate. You have plus, minus, 
minus, plus, minus, and so on, and so on. So this is just. So this rather surprising that uh, you have this system. All right, now, since we got this. Uh, Volodya, is it obvious that it's a unique solution to this system of? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You start with C naught, which is X naught by definition. Then you have C one, which is actually, yeah. and then you you go um, continue. This is Thank you. actually it was our uh, one of our motivations. We were interested in so-called Laurent phenomenon when you solve nonlinear uh, equations or systems of nonlinear equations, and you are getting. Uh, Laurent polynomials. So the only inversion is allowed if you invert variables and not uh, expressions. And the non commutative world is very bad to invert expressions because uh, you have multi stage fractions. So this is, this is. All right, now what we teach our students so as soon as you have just this uh, matrix uh, you can always um, uh, you are looking for its uh, ldu factorizations so you want to present your matrix as a product of uh, low, tri uh, low triangular diagonal and upper triangular Okay, and uh, so now let me consider infinite, uh, semi-infinite Huntington matrices. And to write, suppose, and I want to write solutions for such, uh, for this problem. By the way, in, uh, in, in Russian, it's called Gauss factorizations. Now this is, okay, so this is, okay, now, Let's describe, first of all, what's easiest, and this is follows from the general theory of factorizations of non-commutative matrices, that uh, just in one of our early papers, then it's easy, the easiest way is just to write this diagonal matrix. This is just, uh, uh, so, so if this is H M, so you start X M, then X M plus two, X M plus four, and so on. So that's easy. Now, a little bit harder to describe to describe um, this uh, low triangular matrix, and uh, to this uh, you need just uh, another combinatorial. Definition. So we need what we call truncated Catalan uh, numbers, and then, or it's called sometimes parking functions or ballot functions. Uh, so Dora knows this better than I do. And uh, so let me consider now the set of all Catalan parts but with the condition that they uh, are below this uh, line y equals k. It, so it means that the, the rightmost uh, southeast corner of P has coordinates n s and s is less than k. And then you consider the sum. This is just sum. Also, they are uh, Laurent uh, polynomials and uh, here you ha it depends uh, they depend on n and k and here you have example uh, so, uh, so see um, so well this is x n c n one is given by these formulas now if you go to n n minus one or n n you have just c n and uh, there is a non-trivial theorem which says that uh, the, this is that this um, 
So this term, so non-zero terms of this low triangular matrix is just given by this formula, this very simple formula. So this is combinatorial expression. <clears throat> okay. And so now if, if I know this uh, low triangular matrix, I know what is the upper triangular matrix. So I constructed my factorization of uh, Hanke matrices. And I need this only for M equals zero one because those are the matrices that I'm interested in. Okay, now it's always tempting to consider if you have this, if you have a matrix, it's always tempting to discuss its uh, inverse. Now the inverse also has a sort of a combinatorial structure. And I will try to describe to introduce non-commutative binomial coefficients. Okay, now uh, just to do this, uh, so let me just maybe consider the ratios of my axes. This is, I don't know, this yk. Now, if I have uh, any subset with the k indices, I can construct the product of these guys. So I have a monomial, and so I, or I have a Laurent monomial in axis and xk. And then I define my uh, binomial coefficient. I'm using bold letters here and as uh, this sum. Okay, uh, what is a sort of justification? You, you, you may ask uh, justification. So the first check if if they are somehow related to the famous uh, say a Q um, binomial coefficients. And uh, really there is a specialization, which is XK goes to Q, uh, K, K minus one over two. And then uh, this, um, uh, my binomial coefficient on commutative goes basically is proportional to the famous Q binomial coefficients. This, this non in the cases, of course, if, if Q equals uh, one, then uh, you have just this uh, standard coefficients. Now here are examples now, and uh, in this case, as you see, N choose zero is one, but N choose N, it is not one. It's actually this just this mono equals just to to these monomials. And another check is if there is a reasonable Pascal uh, triangle. Uh, well, yes, it is, and it's written here. Okay, so this is just this. And then the answer is that the inverses to my uh, uh, elements of the, um, so if I consider the inverse to this low triangular matrix, here is the description of this coefficient. Now, and for, uh, now, in, now the proofs are um, in our paper, they are not so easy actually, this is, uh, but anyway, all right. Now this is basically a second approach. Now let me go to the uh, third approach. And if you remember, I had this matrix. Let me just scroll, oops. Let me scroll, what is this? Okay, no, no. Okay, so uh, that I have this matrix. And I will now discuss what is a non-commutative analog of this matrix, P. And uh, second, okay, this is my, this is analog of this uh, three diagonal matrix. 
A, and then uh, if I take then powers of this matrix and take the uh, upper left uh, elements, well, multiplying by X naught, I have exactly my Catalan number. So just this one. Okay, now I would like to put this in a contents. And so let me introduce uh, this matrix E. So this is, I use- How do it still make sense if it's commutative? So do you get something uh, when known? You get a commutative analog with many variables of Catalan. So do you get something so you know about? I mean, before? Okay, if, if I have my, uh, I, I may, I have specialization which gives actually uh, okay, um, so there are so-called QT Catalan numbers. Uh, yeah. If you remember, uh, which were introduced by Garcia and Hyman. And I, we cannot get QT, but we cannot Q comma one. But, but uh, if you pretend that the variables are cumulative, you get something interesting. Uh, yes, 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 but we never, you know, but okay, but I prefer to work with non commutative uh, variables. Okay, thank you. Because the situation, it's much easier to multiply them because I see how, you know, powers must be alternate and so on and so on. Yeah, but I think as a corollary, if people who only like commutative stuff, they still make it something interesting. Yes, so there's still something interesting, yes. And uh, we cannot find basically such formulas, for example, in the literature, or maybe in the So, okay, now let me just put this. So it's important to consider powers of matrices. And uh, let me put this idea in the content. Uh, so I will introduce matrix E and I'm using E because uh, for SL2, uh, there is an element E which is called uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, but in this case, this is just um, all ones uh, on the upper diagonal. And there is a famous matrix equation. Uh, so given for a matrix P, you are looking for a matrix L, which satisfies this condition. Now, basically, if you multiply E by L, it means basically that for this matrix L, you cut it uh, upper row. And the standard, um, so the standard, uh, name for this piece called production matrix and L is called output matrix. And it study, people study this in the community world rather intensively, but we are interested in the non-commutative case. And so, but even if you consider everything in the non-commutative world, then it's very, it's, I can give you the, this as an exercise. It's fun to show that the I throw of L, how to get it. You take this um, matrix P to the power I, and you take this uh, row indexed by zero, and you have this uh, uh, I throw of L. And uh, so this construction is especially good when you have so-called a Hessen Hessenberg matrix. So basically it means that you have a triangular matrix and you have one and you add ones on the next uh, diagonal. So here actually an example of a Hessenberg, uh, Hessenberg matrix. And this is actually a symmetric version on the matrix that I consider here. 
and it appears actually again in factorizations of um, uh, Hankel matrices. So if I consider metric matrix such which starts with C1, but I want to use L naught which comes which came from H naught, then there is just this. Um, identity and actually it was actually a starting point in our uh, it was actually a starting point uh, in our, our approach to uh, this actually to, to non-commutative production Volodya, who yes. Heisenberg it's not Heisenberg Somebody else? No, no, it's just a German mathematician. Ah. And I don't know why people use this name. No, no he, he played with matrices, but it's not a big deal. But he's alive or is it classical? No, no, he's not alive, I believe, but he lived in 20th century. Okay, thank you. I, I really don't... Uh, You know, I was reading the literature <laughs> and it's standard. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. But actually, you know, again, uh, so we have actually examples of a lot of matrices of this type. And when you, and then, in, 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 so you, you uh, so you solve these equations and you found numbers which are just like this and you can get a lot of interesting things. Uh, for example, I can get uh, a non commutative version of Fibonacci numbers in this way. All right, okay. All right, N now let me maybe, uh, now let me just uh, uh, jump to uh, orthogonal polynomials. Okay, um, so let me just uh, recall that uh, in the standard, uh, you know, when we are dealing with the uh, complex uh, functions, then uh, you have basically a functional mu on uh, this uh, functions. Mu is given by just integral with a given function. So this is just a linear map. And I will just, uh, oh, you, um, let's consider a non-commutative version. So I have a ring with a unit. I have an anti-involution, which I denote bar, corresponds to complex conjugation. And suppose I have just a linear map, it's enough just to consider this in polynomials. Then I have to, def I will define just an inner product on these polynomials and by using this mu and here is this, uh, the formula is here. Now in uh, classical mathematics, the formula is given just by, uh, instead of mu, they use integral. So you take this integral and this is just a standard um, integral. So the kernel, all right. And uh, now then, um, so now then uh, let me consider any matrix. And uh, this uh, the MT will be the transposed of this matrix in the Hermitian sense. Uh, so this, the, I will change and go ij, but I'm using uh, this also, this bar, which is uh, my anti involution. And also I can say, what does it mean when M is symmetric matrix? And it's just when you have this identity. All right, and now then uh, let me explain what's, so this, what's uh, uh, 
uh, orthogonal polynomials. So suppose uh, since I have just this inner product, I can I can define then uh, monic uh, ortho monic orthogonal basis. I can, can consider sorry sorry monic orthogonal basis with respect to some inner product, and then uh, this. Uh, sequence of orthogonal polynomials admit a three diagonal Jacobi matrix. So multiplication by T is expressing as just an action of uh, J, of matrix J on these columns, just P no, uh, pi naught, pi one, and so on. And uh, then uh, this product is uh, symmetric. Uh, with a unique um, symmet uh, symmetric diagonal matrix D and uh, such that D zero zero equals M naught. Uh, so this is forced that uh, there are standard relations between orthogonal polynomials. There are, it's always given by three diagonal matrix. Now I can consider what's called a matrix of moments. Of moments. And this will be again a, a, a Hankin matrix. And uh, uh, so that's uh, then and, uh, to construct this corresponding so Jacobi matrix and to write this factorization of my um, Hankel matrix. Okay, but then uh, I have actually this, uh, this uh, in, since this, uh, those polynomials are orthogonal, I know what is their inner product. Uh, so what is their uh, just, uh, inner product and uh, how to get formulas. And the formulas is given exactly by this. Okay, now if I, now as you see, so this is the, the formula is given by the inverse to this matrix L. And when I'm working with Catalan numbers, I am quite for sure about what kind of elements uh, have this matrix. So, and, and because I know that they are generalized binomial coefficients. And uh, here are examples of uh, this uh, polynomials where moments are uh, just uh, this non-commutative Catalan numbers. So this is just the expressions. So coefficients are binomial coefficients. Then you have just, and then you have the standard recursion, which is uh, written here. Now, if you spe uh, uh, specialize all axes to one, then you have just what's called uh, Chebyshev polynomials of the third kind. And those are polynomials who, who just uh, satisfy these recursions. Okay. And uh, since I'm playing with my matrix G sub X. Uh, then uh, let me know that it has a very, very simple factorizations, which is here. And from this, you basically, you can conclude that all, all uh, sort of uh, minors or quasi minors of this matrix uh, are sort of, uh, they are totally negative. So they may be equal to zero or they can be expressed in axis by also using also 
plus uh, uh, addition, multiplication, and inversion, but uh, not uh, subtraction. Okay, now let me also show you, uh, let me also, since I have a little bit more time, so, okay. Okay, let me just show, and so, uh, can you, uh, so uh, you see this matrix, it's, it's here. Now, can you tell me what kind of uh, non-commutative, uh, uh, of non-commutative uh, uh, entries I, I should put here in order to get again uh, this, uh, my non-commutative Catalan numbers. I uh, know that's X, naturally that's put X sub I somewhere. And yes, it, so what I will do is the following. I will multiply this matrix in the following way. I will multiply from the left by row or x1, x2, x3, and so on. And mu multiply by the column. The column will be Mm, will be x naught inverse, x1 inverse, x2 inverse, and so on. So I have actually just matrices um, with the ratios like xk uh, times xi inverse. Those will be entries. But again, if I will take those powers, uh, take the upper, uh, left upper corner element, multiply this by x naught, then I will have my non-commutative uh, Catalan numbers. So I have these uh, polynomials. And actually th this is sort of, well, somehow I lost my expressions. Uh, um, but, uh, okay, but actually, so, there are, um, so I have examples of non-commutative Fibonacci numbers of non-commutative uh, um, Motsky numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, that's uh, actually this. But uh, so, but actually for actually graduate students, actually, this is actually a nice game, even in the uh, commutative case. You're looking for such uh, integer matrices. You consider their powers, and their powers lead to interesting sequences. And then you can find in this uh, um, encyclopedia just the, the corresponding uh, sequences, and uh, you're trying to explain them. All right, uh, so maybe then I will uh, stop here a little bit. I know that I have to speak no more than, than uh, 48 minutes, but... Uh, thank you. All right, but maybe uh, I'll stop. Let's thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's time for questions. Yeah, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, you define non-commutative analog of the classical sequences, Catalan and also Fibonacci, and Motskin. So, uh, do are they unique, canonical in some sense, uh, are they the most natural? Because a priori, the more than one way of defining. Yes, yes. No, they are no, they are solutions of cert certain problems. Ah. And the problems are um, so the problems can be different, but uh, the most. Uh, so, so the way who actually gives you uh, the most uh, interesting answers is so the following: you consider, okay, so you consider this uh, equation for production matrices. Ah. So you, you take this, um, and you are looking for something interesting, but in again in the for this. Um, Catalan numbers, we were interested actually, actually in solving just this equation. Yeah, that's very natural. 
discretion yeah, yeah. and um, so on so on, but that's... Uh... Yes, and, yes. And the Fibonacci, they come in the analogous way? Uh, Fibonacci becomes in the following way. Um, so let's can uh, so I consider so this I consider uh, uh, so okay. So it's known that if I consider matrix like this, yes, P, and uh, but uh, I will put zeros on the diagonal. Uh -huh. And the uh, low diagonal, I will put minuses. Uh -huh. Okay, and then I will uh, use this matrix as a just, um, uh, and so I will use, uh, I will look in the recurrence re relations for, for, um, uh, for polynomials defined by de defined in this way. So, am, am I clear enough? Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. And now, and I know that for some matrices, for the matrix that I explained, I will get what's called Fibonacci polynomials. Huh. And when I get Fibonacci polynomials, so they depend on T. Now, if I put T equals one, then Oh, uh, so uh, Fibonacci numbers are sums of uh, binomial coefficients, yeah. appropriate binomial coefficients. And now I can do this, uh, this generalization of this. And basically if I take our binomial coefficients and add in the way, I will get uh, Fibonacci numbers. Ah, oh, interesting. interesting. Now, but of course I don't have this, uh, expression that uh, f, uh, uh, say, uh, f sub n plus one equals f sub n plus f sub n minus one. I have f, f uh, n, minus one, um, n minus one. It must be multiplied by monomial indexes. But when you specialize all the axes to be one. Yes, yeah, I specialize all the axes to one. I have uh, this one. I can specialize to I can consider Q, spe Q specialization, and I may have uh, um, a sort of Q version of Fibonacci numbers. Are there any other questions? Uh, I have one quick question. Yeah. I, I'm so bad for asking such a silly question, but uh, in reference to the, one of the last comments you made, do you have a, a favorite sort of class of integer matrices to hand to students and say, go figure this out? Uh, okay, I well, it'll, okay, uh, I can show you what we already did. Uh, you know, that's we are just finishing paper. I can tell you what we already did, but uh, actually, uh, the interesting cases are again, you consider you may play in with three diagonal matrices and you put uh, some integers here. Well, Put, a, put some sequences here. Okay, take, take powers, you have a sequence. Then you go to um, this uh, encyclopedia of integers and to see if you have in interesting sequence. If not, you tweak it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. Mm -hmm. So it's this. Any other questions from the audience? Well, let's thank Volodya again for a very nice non-cumulative analogs of this famous sequence. Thank you. And this ends this talk. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, we will see you back here, same time, same place next week. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good night.